Welcome to New York, Olu Fashanu. What is going on, guys? Welcome back to Talking Jets with Tigo. My name is Tigo, and today we're going to talk about, well, the first round pick that the New York Jets made last night with the number 11 overall pick. The New York Jets selected offensive tackle out of Penn State, Olu Fashanu. And look, for those of you who are hanging out with me and Gunny and all that stuff on the draft there, or, or knew me going into the season and what my opinions were into the season. A lot of what I'm about to say is going to sound very contradictory to what I was saying before. So I want to be very clear and get all of this stuff out of the way now. What I wanted was a player that was going to be impactful week one. And the problem was is that we didn't really have that opportunity at the number 10 pick. The only player that I really felt was going to have, or players that I really felt that was going to have a really big impact week one were going to be the wide receivers because that was a very clear need for the New York Jets. And a guy like a Romo Dunze or Malik Neighbors was going to provide a week one impact for this team. But they weren't on the board. And then for Joe Douglas to manufacture a trade back one spot, you know, go from 10 to 11, and turn a sixth round pick, specifically to turn Zach Wilson's sixth round pick into a fourth round pick and a fifth round pick is an absolute home run hitting move. So... Everything, when you take everything into consideration, this is a great pick for the New York Jets. This is still a very deep wide receiver class, and the New York Jets even tried to go up to go and get a wide receiver, and I think that's what makes me feel really comfortable with this pick. We've secured the offensive line. There are no concerns, or there should be no concerns, assuming we, we draft a guard, which we should, um, about the O-line. As long as we stay healthy, we'll be fine, and even if we don't, We've got really, really high-level backups, and here's the key. We potentially have our franchise left tackle of the future. Olufushana was offensive tackle two on my board, and for the longest time this offseason, I had him as offensive tackle one over the likes of Joe Alt. Offensive... Olu Fashanu is by far and away the best pass blocker in this class, has not given up a sack in at, at all in his collegiate career, or I believe it's in the last three years, hasn't given up a sack at Penn State. If he would have declared to go to the draft last year, would have been the number one tackle off of the board. Last year went back to Penn State and is a really, really good addition to the New York Jets Huge human being, 6'6", 315 pounds, really high IQ in my uh, opinion. Just one of the purest pass blockers in this draft class. Now, there are some concerns when you look at hand size and, and things like that. But when you watch the tape, when you watch how he played, when you watch the things that he did at the college level, he overcomes some of the inability. Uh, the inabilities that he has, just like like the God-given inabilities, right? He doesn't have these massive hands. But what he does have is really, really good hand-fighting technique to overcome that, to make sure that he can get his hands inside and in the chest and into his chest. And when we look at the inefficiencies in his game, specifically in the run game, right? He's not super strong at the point of attack or anything like that. When we look at the guys that are in the room right now and the coach that we have in the offensive line coach in Keith Carter, those guys were built in a lab to, to, to do run games. Tyron Smith is a great road grader. Morgan Moses is a great road grader. Keith Carter helped manufacture one of the best run games in the NFL in, the, in Tennessee as the offensive line coach and as the run game coordinator for Tennessee, helping King Henry uh, achieve multiple thousand-yard rushing seasons. So to think that Olu is going into a room with Tyron Smith, arguably the best left tackle in football when he's on the field, going into a room with Morgan Moses, who has played both left and right and is really good in the run game, and being able to learn from those guys is something that we should all really be excited about and I think the biggest thing is is that when Tyron Smith goes down we have a guy that we can really really look at as a 
positive impact player that's going to come in and play at a high level and going into next year, which Aaron Rodgers should be coming back and all of that stuff. We don't have to be back in this situation where we're back at the offensive line well and doing those things. Would I have preferred a weapon? Absolutely. But now the benefit is, is that the New York Jets have more than enough draft capital to come back into the second and go get a guy. And the thing that, sh that makes me feel confident is the fact that the New York Jets tried to come up for a wide receiver. They know where the limitations on this roster are. I trust Joe Douglas to make the right move, and I think the rest of us should be on board. So let me know. What do you guys think we're going to do today in the draft in round two? My guess is that we're going to come into the second round for a wide receiver and then really shore up the interior of the offensive line with a guard slash center prospect. Let me know what you guys think. My predictions are Javon Baker, wide receiver out of UCF, and then Dominic Pooney, uh, offensive tackle. I forget what school. Alrighty, guys. I'm excited for today's draft. Come hang out on the Talking Jets draft party. That's where I will be tonight. And go Jets!